So I think what you have here is a major problem on your hands with regard to a messianic ministry, Morial Ministries, that did this video here, Kabbalah and Metatron. The Metatron and Kabbalah. And he is going to try to convince you that the black magic that defines and flows through the Zohar and the religion called Kabbalah, sometimes with a K, sometimes with a Q, that has an entity called Metatron, which makes people in America think of Megatron <laughs> from the uh, Kabbalah-based Transformer franchise with the all spark and all that. That's an interesting study. This video is not going to be about that, but that is an interesting study to go get into the papers that have been written about the underlying theme of black magic, Kabbalah, and this AI type of, you know, strange life form from outer space, aliens, yet robots that is a central focus in those movies. And so Jacob is going to try to make this massive leap that the Jesus Christ of the Bible, the God Almighty, the angel of the Lord, and all this angel means is messenger. It's like a job description. That he is in fact <clears throat> one in the same with the Kabbalah's naming of this really wicked entity from Kabbalah and the Zohar named Metatron, who wants to give you a spiritual experience for spiritual enlightenment on that broad path. And yet again, I go back to the basics of Christianity. There's one door, and the gospel is very simple. Paul talked about the simplicity of the gospel and how God made it really simple for us. One door, one man who is God, one way in through the blood. And right now, there is this massive movement of people who are Jewish, but they're not the only ones. <laughs> They're not the only ones who are trying to convolute and confuse Christianity by the marrying together of core concepts of a personage found within Kabbalah that takes you down this odd spiritual path that's very similar and on par with Hinduism, kissing cousins through a very strange arrangement of descriptive adjective plus noun describing the locale of where Jesus' throne is in the book of Revelation and making the leap, and I'll show you this, whether in this video or however many videos it's going to take to get through this, we're going to explore this. But anyhow, he's trying to make the connection between the entity, Metatron, the name, the proper name of God, which is Yahweh. And then when Jesus comes through the womb of the virgin, he is called Jesus. He is called Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach. And he's going to try to bridge the name of Metatron to the location of the throne in the throne room of God in Revelation 5, which, as I said, are an adjective and a noun, and make that try to become like a uniform concept for the proper name of God, which is weird. We're going to talk about that, and I'll show you what I mean.
So he's going to make a jump from an adjective descriptor of a noun, a location in Jesus' throne room, to the pronoun of, of Metatron for Jesus' name found within Kabbalah. It'll be something like this. <laughs> And just as well. <laughs> so let's remember, we're over here in Revelation 5, 6. We're talking not about the angel of the Lord. No, 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 no. The Christophany was for the period of time where God would come down as Yahweh. And he would interact with his humanity all throughout the Torah. And he later would come as the son of God in flesh, the incarnation, and there would be no more appearances uh, of the angel of the Lord that we see anywhere in the New Testament. When after Jesus comes in the flesh, it's unnecessary. It's, it's not needed. And his stable form that he comes in is, uh, Revelation 10, the son of man, where he comes as a messenger of grace or wrath, but he is in that glorified flesh that we saw there in first fruits that Paul would tell us about in first Corinthians 15. So that's very important to understand that. And <clears throat> Revelation 5, 6, and I saw in the midst, and we'll just read it and then I'll highlight of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders a lamb standing as having been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god having been sent out into all the earth there's a lot packed into that and we don't want to go over all of those bits and details, but you're probably going to be catching things like seven eyes and seven spirits and et cetera, et cetera. That's a discussion for another day. But what I want to highlight to you in this, so he sees in the midst of the throne, four living creatures. Okay. And we do have midst and it's meso. And it's 3319. And it's location. <laughs> North, south, east, west, smack dab in the middle. It's location. It's an adjective. The purple, the green, the high, the low, the left, the right, the middle, the midst. In the throne room, in the midst is all that's being talked about here with this mesos here in Greek, okay? I mean, you can kind of just skim this, see all the places where middle, midst, locale is being talked about, all these verses. Somebody walks in with your groceries and says, where do I put this? And you say, in the mesos of the table. Put it in the middle of the table. That's all we're talking about here. It's not that exciting. And it's used 59 times in the New Testament. So uh, you can see here, thronos. It just means a throne, throne -os. And the usage of it to know how to use it properly is a king's throne, seat, meton, <laughs> power, dominion, and a potentate. And it's what God sits on. And it also is illustrative and simple, though it is a literal object. I stress the word object, noun, of where God sits. The things 
that God sits on and the location of where they are do not make up the character, nature, or proper name of who God is. Jacob. And so you can see that it is, there's a ton of uses of this throne. He extends it out to his people even that are in him. It has nothing to do with his name. It's used 63 times in the Bible, and it is a promise for power and authority in the world to come. It is a descriptor. Look, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, seat throne from throne to sit, a stately seat throne, but implication, power, or concretely a potent seat throne. It's power and a place where a kingly power or royalty would rule from. The Messiah, the partner and assistance in the divine administration. The divine power belongs to Christ. To judges, it's the equivalent of a tribunal or a bench. Um, it is used by metonymy of one who holds dominion or exercises authority. This in plural of angels. So God's given angels power and he uses that same descriptor of power and an object to communicate that there are non-God angelic <laughs> beings that have authority. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Jesus's name is Metatron. Did you see what I'm saying here? Because in him were created all things in the heavens and upon the earth and the visible and the invisible were thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things through him and unto him have been created. So God has created beings and then given them massive amounts of authority and power. That's, that's the context of what we're dealing with here. And you'll remember from uh, dominions and rulers, let's see, did somebody else get the power to rule and misuse it? Oh, I'm almost certain someone did. Let's see, who could that be? It's not always indicative of Jesus Christ, is it? You certainly can't get a proper name out of it, right? Let's see, I'm pretty sure Paul told us about a group of angels who actually did the opposite of what God asked of them and they fell and they're evil look at that dominions Domin um, we're going to keep going with um, curios here we go well, okay. Hang on. Here it is. So it's uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Oh, wait a minute. That's a title. And we know that we're talking about Jesus from the context of everything else in the scripture. <laughs> and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of who? Who? There's a big giant liar out there with power that lies to people. He also has a title, the adversary, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood alone, but against, oh, there it is, principalities, powers, and the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. You suppose there might be ministries out there that are fronting for him and trying to tie Kabbalah, Metatron, Lucifer to the Jesus Christ of the Bible to, to convolute it? I think so. Regarding uh, teaching of yours and the use of the word uh, Metatron in witnessing to Jews, evangelizing Jews. Uh, Looks a little nervous to me. <laughs> Join me for part two. We're going to go there.